All praise due to Allah. He blesses His servants by accepting their acts of obedience and by granting them opportunities to attain further goodness. That allows them to increase in rank and be pardoned for sins. May Allah grant His commendation and protection to our Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Allah enabled him to receive and convey revelation, relieved him of any burden, and raised his mention. O oh Allah, grant your accommodation, protection, and blessings to him as well as to his esteemed family, noble companions, and all who continue to follow their path. Dear people of Iman, the counsel which Allah the Most Exalted gave all former and latter generations is to observe taqwa. That is what brings about honor, success, and salvation. No one who adheres to it fails, and no one who forsakes it will succeed. Therefore, people of sound understanding, you must observe taqwa of Allah in order to attain true success. Dear Ummah of Islam, Allah the Most Exalted created humans and encouraged them to make beneficial use of the earth and develop it. Allah said, He is the one who created your forefather Adam from the earth and enabled you to settle upon it and populate it. The population and development referred to encompass all that is beneficial for Allah's servants and their lands, including agriculture, manufacturing, construction, and having means of protection. Allah gave His servants what they would need to develop His earth. He granted them countless apparent and inconspicuous blessings, and He provided them with opportunities to attain success. Thus, the individual who is soundly guided and truly successful is the one who is keen to take advantage of those in order to benefit himself develop his nation and uplift his ummah. Servants of Allah, opportunities may come in various forms, such as drawing near to Allah by performing certain prescribed acts of worship, performing acts of benevolence whose benefit extends to others, participating in developing one's nation, or using one's influence or position to benefit one's land, one's society, Islam, and Muslims. A person of high aspirations makes opportunities from what he has been granted. He does not wait for opportunities to come knocking at his door. Rather, he takes the initiative to seize them. And this applies whether they are related to this world or the hereafter. In the Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shayba, there is a narration from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, in which he said, I detest seeing a person sitting idle without being engaged in any task of this world or the hereafter. Furthermore, Allah the Most Exalted commended His Prophets and Messengers by saying about them, they hastened to perform righteous deeds, they supplicated to us out of hope and fear, and they were humble to us. This means that they took initiative to do good things, and they did not neglect any opportunity to pursue whatever virtue they could attain. One instance of that was when the heart of the Prophet Musa became calm as Allah addressed him. Musa seized the opportunity to supplicate. He said, My Lord, expand my chest for me to accept responsibility and persevere through difficulty. Make things easy for me and allow me to speak clearly so that people will comprehend what I say. Grant me as an assistant for my family, my brother Harun. Increase my strength by him and allow him to share this task of prophethood with me. Then came the response from Allah, Musa, you have been granted all that you requested. A second instance was when the Prophet Zechariah entered the area where Maryam stayed to worship Allah. She was secluded, was not engaged in any sort of trade, and had no source of earnings. However, every time Zechariah entered her place of worship, he found her supplied with provisions. He asked Maryam, where did you get this from? She said, this is from Allah. Indeed, Allah provides immeasurably for whomever He wills. Then after witnessing such manifestations of Allah's mercy and bounty, Zechariah implored Allah to grant him righteous offspring. That was because he recognized that the one who provided for Maryam without any material means leading to that happening was completely able to grant an elderly man offspring. 
At that, Zechariah invoked his Lord, saying, My Lord, grant me from yourself righteous offspring. You most certainly hear all prayers. Later on, the angels called out to him while he was standing in prayer at his place of worship. They said, Allah conveys to you the glad tidings of a son named Yahya. He will believe in the word from Allah, that being the prophet Isa. He will be knowledgeable, be a leader of high standing, be someone who avoids all disobedient inclinations, and be a prophet who is among the most righteous of people. A remarkable third instance was when the Prophet Suleiman felt remorse over letting well-trained horses of the highest breed preoccupy him from remembering his Lord and from the evening prayer. He sought nearness to Allah, the most exalted, by way of the very things that had preoccupied him. Suleiman instructed that they be sacrificed. He gave their meat to the needy, and he seized the opportunity to repent, ask Allah's forgiveness, and seek Allah's mercy. He said, My Lord, forgive me, and bestow upon me a kingdom that would not belong to anyone else after me. Indeed, you alone are the bestower. Allah then responded and granted him something even better than what he chose to forego. Allah said, So we subjected the wind to him, and it blew gently by his order wherever he willed. We also subjected to him the shayateen among the jinns, including every kind of builder and diver, as well as others bound in fetters. This is our gift to you, and you may give or withhold. No account will be asked of you. Furthermore, our Prophet Muhammad, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, exemplified seizing the opportunities that he was granted. After migrating to a Medina and being granted various opportunities by Allah, the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, delegated duties and also assigned certain tasks to those who were most fit for them. For instance, Bilal was entrusted with the call to prayer. Khalid ibn Walid was entrusted with providing military protection for their religion, and Hassan ibn Thabit was entrusted with providing poetic and verbal protection for their religion. May Allah be pleased with all of the companions and grant them a reward that will make them pleased. The Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, once passed by the marketplace of Medina while people were occupied with their commerce. He wanted to remind them about what this world is worth so that seeking its gains would not divert them from seeking the gains of the hereafter. He passed by the carcass of a lamb that had small ears. He picked it up by its ear and then made an offer in a raised voice. He said, Which of you would like to have this for a dirham? One silver coin. The people replied, We would not like to have it for any price. What would we do with it anyway? He then asked them, Would you like to own it at all? They replied, We swear by Allah that even if it was alive, it would still be considered defective due to its small ears. Thus, what can be said now after it is deceased? He told them, I swear by Allah that this world is worth less to Allah than this carcass is to you. This was collected by Muslim. A hadith in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad mentions that Ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, once climbed a tree to pick a siwak for Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant him commendation and protection. The shins of Ibn Mas'ud were quite thin, and while he was up the tree, the wind that was blowing caused him to lean. The people laughed at him, so Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, asked, What are you laughing about? They replied, Prophet of Allah, we are laughing about how thin his two shins are. The Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, then said, I swear by the one in whose hand my soul lies that the two of them will be heavier in the balance than the mountain of Uhud. Here, the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, sees the opportunity to inform his ummah that people will not have more virtue than others on the day of resurrection as a result of their stature or appearance. On the contrary, they will only have more virtue due to the righteousness of their hearts and deeds. Allah the Most Majestic does not merely look at people's appearance, color, or stature. Rather, He looks at their hearts and deeds. A hadith in the two Sahih collections mentions that Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant him commendation or protection, said, A large, heavy man will be brought forth on the day of resurrection, but to Allah, He will not have weight even as little as the wing of a mosquito. Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant him commendation or protection, added, Read Allah's statement, Therefore, on the day of resurrection, we will not give them any weight. 
A further instance that demonstrates seizing opportunities can be found in the two Sahih collections. Abdullah ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with both of them, narrated that the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, once mentioned that 70,000 people would enter Jannah without being held to account or being punished. As a result, Okasha ibn Mihsan, may Allah be pleased with him, stood and said, Messenger of Allah, ask Allah to make me one of them. The Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, said, O oh Allah, make him one of them. Then a man among the Ansar also stood and said, Messenger of Allah, Ask Allah to make me one of them. He replied, Akasha asked first. May Allah grant all of you his blessings. My dear brothers, contemplate the initiative taken by Akasha. May Allah be pleased with him to seize that opportunity. In just a single moment, he became among those who would be admitted to Jannah without being held to account or being punished. Dear people of Iman, every chance to do something good, no matter how small it may seem, is a profitable opportunity. Protect yourselves from the hellfire, even with only half a date. If someone cannot find something that little, then with a kind word. You should never look down on any righteous deed, even if just meeting your brother with a pleasant face. In Sahih Muslim, there is a hadith in which the Prophet, may Allah grant commendation and protection, said, I saw a man enjoying the rewards of Jannah, and that resulted from him removing a tree that obstructed the pathway and caused people harm. My dear brothers who have Iman, you must also realize that there are certain opportunities which have no substitute. An example of such an opportunity comes in the form of having one or both of one's parents still alive. They are the most virtuous gate to Jannah. A person can choose to do as he wishes regarding that gate, but he will have to bear the consequences. In Sahih Muslim, there is a hadith in which the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, said, May he be disgraced, may he be disgraced, may he be disgraced. Companions who were present asked, Messenger of Allah, who are you referring to? He replied, a person who finds one or both of his parents in old age, yet still is not admitted to Jannah. It is certainly a tragedy if both of a person's parents pass away without him seizing the opportunity to treat them well. Pleasing our Lord lies in pleasing both of one's parents, whereas incurring the wrath of our Lord lies in incurring the wrath of both of one's parents. Seize every opportunity you can to attain your Lord's forgiveness and to be admitted to Jannah whose expanse is that of the heavens and the earth and which has been prepared for the people of Taqwa. Among their qualities is that they give during prosperity and hardship, they suppress anger and they pardon others. Allah loves those who worship Him in the best way and also fulfill the rights of others. May Allah bless all of us by the Quran and Sunnah and may He enable us to glean benefit from the ayah and wisdom they contain. I say this much and I ask Allah to forgive me and all of you. Thus ask his forgiveness as he is certainly the continually forgiving. All praise is due to Allah. He is the one who created death and life in order to examine which of you are best in actions. And He is the Almighty, the continually forgiving. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad is Allah's worshipping servant and messenger who all the way until the end of his life worshipped Allah as he rightfully deserves. May Allah grant his commendation, protection and blessings to his messenger as well as all of the Messenger's family and companions, and all who follow their path until the day of recompense. Dear people of Iman, still being alive in this world provides us with the greatest of opportunities. If one's deeds are righteous, he should perform more of them. If one's deeds are otherwise, he should desist from them and return to Allah. In the Masadrak of Al-Hakim, there is a hadith with a Sahih chain of narration in which the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, said, take advantage of five before another five. Your youth before your old age, your health before your illness, your prosperity before your poverty, your free time before you become preoccupied, and your life before your death. The more a person tries to be serious about life and to avoid his own disobedient inclinations, he would effectively seize opportunities and outdo others in performing righteous deeds. Allah said, the foremost in performing righteous deeds in this world will be the foremost to be granted high ranks in the hereafter. They are the ones who will be brought nearest to Allah and He will admit them 
to gardens of delight in Jannah. Part of Allah's favor to us is that He allowed the opportunity we have to continue until our very last moment. A hadith in the Muslim of Imam Ahmed mentions that Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, said, If one of you has a sapling in his hand, when the final hour is imminent, and he is able to plant it before the hour begins, he should do so. Servants of Allah, seize opportunities before it is too late. Always remember that opportunities are blessings, and blessings may not return once they depart. Ibn al-Qayyim, may Allah have mercy upon him, said, When Allah, who is perfect in every way, opens a door to goodness for a person, but the person does not seize the opportunity, Allah may come between the person and his heart, preventing the person from what he may hope for and want to do. And that would be a form of punishment for him. When a person favors laziness and misses opportunities, he will have regrets at a time when it is too late to make amends. On that day, a person will remorsefully remember what had passed. But what good would remorse do at that time? He will say, I now wish so much that I had sent forth righteous deeds for my life in the hereafter. My dear brothers, I say to you, hasten to seize opportunities and do not miss them. Attaining true honor lies in seizing opportunities. Make the most effective use of your life while you are still young. Although life continues to be extended even as you become elderly, the reality is that it still remains in decline. Dear people of Iman, remember that Allah gave you a command in which He began with Himself. He said, Indeed, Allah grants His commendation to the Prophet, and the angels invoke Allah to grant Him even further commendation. People of Iman, invoke Allah to grant the Prophet commendation, and grant Him protection as well. Allah grant your commendation to Muhammad and the family of Muhammad, just as you granted your commendation to Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim. Indeed, you are most praiseworthy, most glorious. Allah bless Muhammad and the family of Muhammad just as you blessed Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim. Indeed, you are most praiseworthy, most glorious. Allah be pleased with the Prophet's rightly guided successors, Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, and Ali, and all the other companions, as well as all who follow their path until the day of recompense. O oh Allah, the most merciful of all who show mercy, we implore you to be pleased with us along with them by your pardon, kindness, and generosity. O oh Allah, grant strength to Islam and Muslims. O oh Allah, grant strength to Islam and Muslims. O Allah, grant strength to Islam and Muslims. Weaken shirk and those engaged in it, and protect the lands of Islam. Make this nation, as well as all lands of Muslims, ones that are safe and peaceful. O Allah, rectify the conditions of Muslims in all places. We ask this of you, the owner of all favor and majesty. O Allah, set right for us the affairs of our religion, which protect us from displeasing you. Set right for us the affairs of this world which contain our livelihood. Set right for us the affairs of the hereafter to which we shall finally return. Make life a source of more good for us and make death a source of rest for us from every evil. We ask this by your mercy. O oh Allah, we seek refuge in you from your blessings coming to an end. The well-being you grant us changing to difficulty. Your punishment overtaking us suddenly and all things that anger you. O oh Allah, the ever-living, self-sufficient sustainer of all, we implore you to protect the land of the two holy mosques. We beseech you to grant it protection that can come from none besides you. O oh Allah, allow its prosperity and stability to continue. We ask this by your mercy, as you are the Lord of all creation. O oh Allah, if people intend to harm the land of the two holy mosques, we ask you to make the plots of such hostile people lead to their own demise. We ask this of you, the Almighty and Invincible, the owner of all majesty and kindness. O oh Allah, Lord of all creation, grant the custodian of the two holy mosques success and guidance to all that you love and are pleased with. Grant him the greatest of rewards for all he does to support Islam and Muslims. O oh Allah, guide him and his deputy to all that you love and are pleased with. O oh Allah, the most merciful all who show mercy, we implore you to grant your guidance to all leaders of Muslims. O oh Allah, protect and grant victory to our troops who defend the borders of our nation. O oh Allah, grant victory and protection to our troops who defend the borders of our nation. O oh Allah, the most merciful of all show mercy, forgive the people of Islam and Iman, men and women alike, whether alive or deceased. Our Lord, forgive us and forgive our brothers who have preceded us in accepting Iman. Do not place in our hearts any rancor towards people who have Iman. Our Lord, you are surely the most kind and the bestower of mercy. Our Lord, we have certainly wronged ourselves, and if you do not forgive us and have mercy upon us, we shall most surely be among those who lose everything. Our Lord, grant us good in this world, grant us good in the hereafter, and save us from the torment of the hellfire. Our Lord is Almighty, exalted above every falsehood people may ascribe to Him. He grants protection to all of His messengers, and all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all creation.